It was too good to be true. One of the most exciting fights of the year, if not of the year, <clears throat> cannot be repeated for a follow-up fight for uh, an epic rematch. We can't have that. Nope. Uh, Prohoshka vs. Teixeira 2, the sequel to one of the best fights of all time, is off. It's not happening anymore because the MMA gods hate us and we just cannot have nice things. What an absolute heartbreak. What a disaster. And it all falls on Yuri Prohoshka's shoulders. Literally, literally falls on his shoulders. <laughs> Pun intended, because Yuri Prohoshka uh, tore his rotator cuff. He smashed his shoulder a week ago, and he wanted to fight on and pull a TJ Dillashaw and lose because of a, a torn shoulder. Um, but luckily, the doctors told him, nah, you're not taking this fight. If you do, you will take irreparable damage, and you'll probably never be able to fight again. So Prohoshka is out, and they offered Glover to share a... Um, a vacant title fight against Jan Blaho, or no, against Ankalaev. But Glover wanted an easy matchup in Jan uh, on short notice because, of course, I see what he's doing there because Jan, he beat him so easily last time and it would be short notice for Blahovic, who was preparing for a striker, would have had no time to prepare for the relentless grappling assault of Glover. So, he basically would have fought a Jan, who's a striker with no defensive wrestling preparation on short notice, would have worked in his favor to get the belt back. But they said, no, we want you to fight Magomedic alive uh, because he's a fresh opponent and he's been undefeated for four years. He's on a win streak right now. And that's who we want you to fight. And he's like, no, sorry, not taking that fight on short notice. I need more time. And honestly, OK. This wasn't unreasonable that he at least asked for an extra month and to fight um, Magomed in Brazil if he's going to take that fight, which I wouldn't have mind. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been upset with that because UFC 283 in Rio it needs another big fight and there's an open main event slot. It would have been perfect to slide into Shira versus Magomed as the main event in Rio de Janeiro. I would have been down for that. Um, but the reason why the UFC couldn't come to terms with that is because UFC 282, it needs, it needs a big fight. I mean, it needs a headline. And if Glover would have accepted the Magomed fight, but the UFC went on his terms to do it a month later, UFC 282 would not have a main event because they didn't have an extra title fight on there or any other extra big names to carry this card. So, of course, Glover is off the card not fighting for the title, and now it is Blahovich versus Ankalaev for the vacant 205 title. Wow. Yuri Prohoshka vacates his title. That breaks my heart, man. I predicted he'd be champion. I'm a huge fan of Prohoshka, man, and now he's dropping the title. That sucks, man. And he's going to be out for a year because this shoulder injury was really bad. So yeah, he drops the title. I respect him for not wanting to hold up the division. Um, but it's really unfortunate because he could have held that title. And with Glover turning down a replacement, they could have just done an interim fight between Blahovic and Magomed. The winner of that could fight Yuri. And then Glover, sorry Glover, bye-bye, get in line. But now that's not happening. So I don't know, what do you do? What do you do now with the winner of this fight, whoever walks out the champion? Because what if... Let's say, let's say Yuri Prohoshka is ready to go in the summer, hypothetically. You got to give him that title shot. Therefore, does Glover just take another fight? Does he retire? Um, but if Yuri still is not ready by then and we have to wait till like literally December of 2023 for him to fight again. Okay, maybe you can give Glover the winner. But wouldn't that be funny if, if Jan Blachowicz beats Magomed, becomes champ again, and then Glover gets a shot in full circle. He loses the belt to Glover again. That'd be pretty insane. That'd be pretty insane. And it's funny because I did pick Jan 2 in my full card prediction video. Um, now, could we be seeing Jan Blachowicz as a 2x light heavyweight champion? Very possible, but now I'm kind of having second thoughts on my prediction now that it's for the title. And it's five rounds. I really don't know if I should stick with Jan, or if I should switch to Magomed and Goliath. I don't know who to pick here. Like, Magomed is really good. He's really dangerous. 
and stylistically is a threat to Blahovic, but at the same time, Yan is also kind of a, a bad matchup for Magomed too. They are each other's toughest matchups. They do cancel each other out with the styles they do bring, with their counter-heavy um, styles, both of them being elite power strikers who have great defense, who can make you pay when you commit to your offense. Those kind of fights are really tricky when you put two high-level defensive strikers against each other with good counter ability. It makes for a tough fight to predict, but we'll see what happens. I might do like an individual prediction video for this fight outside this video, and it might be the same prediction, Jan, or it might be a new prediction, uh, Magomed ain't alive, but I don't know, man, because I have such a bad, I have such a bad title fight prediction record this year. And I'm scared that if I pick Jan, I'm going to be wrong and add to another wrong title fight. Another list of wrong title fights. And then also, if I pick Magomed, I'm not confident because every time I go against Blahovich, it has not gone well. But when I pick him, I mean, he loses. So this is a tricky one to call. Uh, it sucks that we're not getting Prohoshka versus Teixeira too. Really bummed. I was excited for the sequel. And Yuri was going to win as well. Yuri Prohoshka was literally going to send Glover to the Shadow Realm, get a KO of the year, <clears throat> make a statement title defense, more than likely. Or maybe Grandpa Glover could have got redemption and went out on a high note, but I don't think so. So I think this is kind of a blessing in disguise for Teixeira, that this fight is not happening. He got spared. And you know what? Honestly, it's better for him that he's not fighting at all, because if he had to fight, he would have had to fight Anka Live. He knows it's a bad matchup, and he knows on short notice he wouldn't be prepared, and he'd lose. So, yeah, this sucks, man. I wish Yuri a speedy recovery, and I hope when it's all said and done that he will get his title back like nothing ever happened and go on an epic title run with some title defenses. Um, but those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Peace out.